Just making a quick video on the Aurora R13 power draw. Um, I do have Halo Infinite running in the background at the moment, just putting a realistic load on it. I don't really want to do synthetic benchmarks like Cinebench and running stuff like that. I'm just trying to show what the average gamer who gets this computer and gets home and plays games like all of us are going to play. Um, not too many people just sit around in the house running benchmarks all day on their computer. I just want to show what it's going to do in games. But as you can see, I've got Intel power package up here on the screen. It's a bit hard to film it with the phone, but it's drawing about 120 odd watts at the moment. Um, and you can see down the bottom here that usage is about 30%. The GPU is drawing, it's running about 95 to 100% at the moment. And its power draw is over here. The total board power is drawing about 340 watts. So all up, the two of them together, it's under 500 watts in a game, AAA game. The power supply is 750 watts, it's running it quite comfortably. The rest of the computer doesn't use a whole lot of power. They're your two biggest drawers on your computer. But just, I've, I've checked this out on a lot of different games and that's about the average of what it gets on most games. Um, Sure, if you run a synthetic benchmark and you push the CPU to 100% and the GPU to 100%, thermals are going to go through the roof and I'm sure it's going to draw more power than it's drawing now, but I'm pretty sure they've got it limited, that it's not going to draw over the 750 watts, so I can't see it being a problem with the 750 watt power supply. And the thermals and everything that comes with the computer, the way it's set up, if you're just playing games on it and you're not sitting around doing benchmarks and trying to push it as hard as you can because to be honest this is not the computer you want to buy to try and overclock it to the wall and run it and max everything it's it's just not that type of computer it's just for the person that wants to buy it take it home run some games on it and it's it's going to do that fine um if you if you want to buy a computer to overclock and push it as hard as you can don't get, don't get a computer like this. Make your own computer, put a custom water cooling loop on it, and then you can play around with it when you've got some thermal headroom. But th this computer, single 120 radiator on the CPU, it, it's not gonna it's not gonna cope with all that. But for the average person that buys it, gets it home, runs games on it like I'm going to be doing, this is just the stock fan curves. I haven't changed any of it. It's this is how it comes without changing anything. Jumping into games. This is the power draw, this is the temperatures it's going to run at, and you can hear it at the moment. It's not too noisy at all. And as you can see, the game is running in the background. I've just been using Halo Infinite because it can, it still taxes everything in the background when you don't have it open. It's just a bot game, but it's all maxed out, 1440p, highest everything. And this is the power drawer it's running. And these are the temperatures it's running. So overall, it does a job. I don't think you'll have any dramas with it. I was a little concerned about the 750 watt power supply, as are many people. But I'm sure they've tuned everything that's inside the computer to make sure it runs underneath the supplied power limit. So I don't think there's going to be any problem if you're just using it for everyday gaming. I'm sure if you want to go out there and push it, you could. But I'm not going to be doing that with this computer. I didn't buy it for that. I'm just showing what the average person can get and these are some results.